I've used TubeBuddy for keyword research and YouTube SEO since 2017. But when I started this YouTube channel, I had zero watch time and zero videos and the tool gave me very positive results on very competitive search terms. And the deeper I dug, the more false positives and vice versa I kept finding. Do you really think that I'm able to rank for a search term with the competition of one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform? And then you might think, well, two buddies off. Well, uh, no, VidIQ thinks that I can't even rank for my own YouTube channel name. So I went on a quest to find out what is going on here. Oi, what do you think you're doing? Get oh, down yes. from there. Yeah, the pitfall with using a keyword research tool is that you blindly trust the tool without using your gut feeling. You become a little bit lazy, stop doing manual keyword research and stop using those gray matters upstairs. It is the same thing as with that self-driving electric car and you not paying attention to the road anymore. And I can already hear the comment section. Dexter, you are talking smack about my favorite tool. It's not bad because I pay 50 bucks a month for it. If you think you can do it better, why don't you? Well, that is exactly what I did. For the research of this video, I programmed a proof of concept for a keyword research tool. And within a matter of a day, I had a tool that works better than what is already out there. I will show you the prototype in a minute. During programming, I bumped into some issues that could explain why vidIQ and TubeBuddy are so inaccurate and why they often contradict each other's scores. All the tools, including mine, use the YouTube API, the application programming interface that Google makes available to everybody. However, the API doesn't give you everything you want to know and that's a problem. To determine if you should make a video or not, you need to have three things. First of all, low competition. The smaller the channels are in the search results compared to yours, the better. Because the more watch time they got on their channel, the less likely you are to beat them. Second of all, high search volume, so you know that there is actually demand for a topic. Low search volume, low competition is only desirable for a new channel. High search volume, high competition isn't desirable in any case. And third of all, relevant search results for your search query. Channel size is not a problem. The YouTube API gives views and subscribers, but search volume is because the API doesn't give it to you. So the only thing you can do is um, estimate it based on absolutely nothing. And I think this is why vidIQ and TubeBuddy often contradict. And then relevancy, and relevancy is really hard. As humans, we know that boat, ship and barge basically means the same floating device. But the computer has absolutely no idea. Keyword research tools, including mine by the way, blindly trust the returned search results to be relevant to the search query at hand. While that may not be the case, which gives a couple of problems. First, if YouTube can't find results with ship, it will return results with botch, which could mean that this is an amazing search term because nobody made a video about ships. But when ship returns results with botch and botch videos are only produced by large channels, you get a bad score in your YouTube video keyword research tool. Second, YouTube returns search results based on what a viewer is most likely to watch next. And that could be irrelevant to your search term. Third, the amount of returned search results says absolutely nothing in contrast to what TubeBuddy claims. Because if I get 4 million search results and only the first three are relevant to my search query, that means that all those bogus fake videos are counted and weighted into the score and if those are big channels you get a Often Hindi spoken videos show up in search results which are absolutely no competition for an English spoken channel. But if those Hindi channels are big you get a bad When you do manual keyword research you can at least see what kind of audience it attracts a little bit. For example, when I see a lot of spammy videos or a lot of Hindi videos, I know that that will attract a spammy loving and a Hindi loving audience. And that is not the audience I want to get on this channel, for example. So why do big YouTubers keep promoting those tools when they clearly have their flaws? So they have either never tested it 
they don't care, which could be the case, or there is a financial motive. And uh, sure enough, nobody gives an affiliate commission of 50% recurring. Meaning that if you send 100 people over to TubeBuddy, they will give you 500 bucks for free every single month. And there are even more expensive plans, so this calculation is quite conservative. But there is another thing that I found remarkable. Because everything you can find in the API is publicly available on youtube.com for free. In other words, there is no data that a tool can give you that youtube.com can't give you for free. And one of the things that annoys me the most about vidIQ and TubeBuddy is, is that they focus on the wrong things. Tags, for example. The tag tools in vidIQ and TubeBuddy are so prominently present in the tools that a beginner might get the idea that those YouTube tags actually do something. If this is new information for you, I will link up a video in the description that explains the whole thing. Another example, SEO scores, which are totally bogus. Those SEO scores only exist in the TubeBuddy realm, but not in the YouTube algorithm realm. So is it all bad with those tools? No, absolutely not. There are some features in those tools that can become quite handy. For example, if you like to know the total amount of views on a channel for, let's say, 1500 videos. Yeah, technically that information is publicly available on YouTube and you can whip out a calculator for 1500 videos, but a tool can do that much quicker for you. Or, for example, showing a graph of the competition of the views over the last 30 days, or showing a graph of the view velocity of a couple of videos on the competition's channel. Again, not something you can't do without a spreadsheet, but a tool is handy for that. Okay, let me give you a quick rundown of my prototype. Over here, I can type in a search query, for example, how to get more views on YouTube in 2021. And I click on search and now it gives me the search results of that search query. It gives me a score for that search query, the chance of beating the competition in these search results. But I also give you the search results itself. So you are forced to look at the search results. And in those search results, you can see, for example, chance of beating this channel is 0%. Chance of beating this channel is 0%. Chance of beating this channel is 0%, 0%, 0%. But over here, I have a search result of a channel that has only 2,200 subscribers with only 85,000 views. And therefore, the chance of beating this channel is much larger and therefore it has a score of 89%. In this case, I don't have a lot of Indian channels around here, but if you think that they clog up your search results, you can easily check this filter, filter India-based channels and click on search and now those Indian-based channels are gone. I have some ideas to improve the accuracy of this prototype even further, but I will never have a 100% accurate keyword research tool because I lack the same data as TubeBuddy and vidIQ do. Learning to do manual keyword research is a skill that every YouTuber should master, even if you still keep using the tools. If you don't know how to do that, check out my complete keyword research guide here on the screen.